All right, so we're back. Part two, ranking various wrestling attires. Part of the bigger series of showing wrestling to Dom. So as we've seen, pretty fair rating so far. Dom's enjoying most of them, you know, rating them pretty highly. We'll move on. Number six, Dom. Kyrie Sane from Stardom. This is a women's promotion out in uh, Japan. Right. Her whole gimmick is... Uh, so... Funny enough, this is a this is in a sense. How would you say? Uh, this is a case of a, a wrestler. Uh, how uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, integrating their like real life hobbies into their wrestling gimmick. So obviously, as you can see, you know she she mainly dresses up as a pirate and all. Uh huh. This ties into the fact that I think one of actually like one of her big hobbies in real life is yachting. Yeah, really? Mm-hmm. And that's where she kind of came up with the whole pirate persona for her character. Interesting. Hmm. I like it. it, it it's unique. I like it. The, the 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 image I'm seeing on the left, she has the... Uh, what is that specifically called? The wheel. The wheel. Just the wheel to to uh, steer, I'm assuming, a pirate boat. But it, it looks good. I like it. The white coat. Uh, I like the the white attire. It makes you stand out a bit. The the right one. I'm seeing she has. I'm assuming that's the kimono along with the uh, the the paper umbrella. Yeah, the one on look- the sorry, the yeah. one on the right was a part of her gimmick where she teamed with Asuka, and they were known as uh, the Kabuki Warriors. Well, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and then uh, real quickly, Dom, I just want to show you this. Um, in NXT, which is a part of a uh, WWE, right? When she won their women's title, oh man, I actually oh wait here. Uh, hopefully you can see this. She came out. She would come off a treasure chest, and before it was empty. After she won the title, she would come out with it, open it up, and there was the gold, which was the championship. Oh, I see. I see. So, thoughts, rankings. Or okay, so rankings. What would you? Yeah, I like the white attire. It, it makes her pop out. Uh, the the yacht thing. It looks nice, and definitely definitely gives her a character that makes her look unique. Uh, I'm assuming her her whole shtick is to, to be like some sort of like pirate, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm incorrect about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it looks it looks nice. it looks nice. What would you mm-hmm. rank it? I definitely really like the the one on the right. I think that one definitely stands out more for me. It just makes you look more menacing, along with the uh, uh, what was the the uh, the purple little underline, like little dashes she has. It looks nice. I would give her. I'll give her a name. It looks nice. All right. Well, next, Cody Rhodes. He was uh, so he's a WWE guy currently. He was also with AEW. He's one of those guys that has basically toured the world. He was with New Japan for a time. Uh, right now, this is what his current gear looks like. And what people have compared it to is... Uh, they always call him Homelander, like from the, the boys. Oh, yeah. And uh, as you can see in the second image, when he comes out, he gets a ton of pyro and fireworks for his entrance. Uh, what are your thoughts, though? Interesting. Yeah, okay. this guy looks like... He, this guy looks pretty menacing. Uh, the whole blue attire, like the whole overcoat, along with the the white overcoat, and then the, the the gold flakes around as well, and the white belt and the 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 boots. The boots look menacing. Oh man, like this guy looks like he would kill me. Hmm. I like the white hair. That looks nice. It, it, but again, now, now that you're referring to the, the whole night from the boys, it, it looks. Wow, it, it looks good. I like it. I like this. Wow. I think I would give this... I kind of want to give it an S just because it, it makes him look confident. It makes him look like he's going to, you know, destroy anyone who comes into his, his way. It looks simple. I like it. But, like, I think this this way of being simple looks nice. Him playing it off at this big guy. Ooh. I think I would give... I want to give it an S or an A. But I think I've already one too many A's in my list. 
Hmm. I'm gonna give this one a, a, an A again. Simple looks menacing. All right. So the next one. The next one is Finn Balor. I'm not showing it to you because I want to explain it first ahead of time. So, what you're going to see is he has his basic attire, right? Right. But, when uh, for special occasions, he has a separate character known as the Demon. And for this, he gets all painted up and gets like these really intricate designs. And uh, if you want, after I show you the two that I put, I can show you even more designs he's had. But he always kind of goes really detailed and intricate with the character. So Finn Balor, WWE. On the left is what he usually wears. You can see it's very kind of like basic, just the black jacket, black trunks. But then he also has the demon character where he gets all painted up and has these intricate designs all over him. What are your thoughts See, and rankings? Well, I like this. I like this. I like this. The 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 painting is definitely interesting. I like it. It's menacing. It's scary. The bottom right. Uh, I mean, if you were to ignore his like his mouth, like where you can actually see his mouth, and just like focus on on the the monster like mouth that's being shown, it, it's scary. Uh, it's scary, but it's unique, right? It's it's um. I would just say it uh, like. Uh, if you're watching like Venom, you know, with the top right, it's just the huge mouth, the huge tongue coming out. Ooh. The, the, the one on the left, is, it seems basic, it's simple, it's nice, but, it, you know, it's interesting. But for for the, the painting stuff, like like the whole huge stick of just a monster, like, like on his chest, or just, you know, him being the monster is about to consume anything that comes over him, I'm going to give it an S. I like this, I like this. I'm assuming he has someone to paint it for him. Oh, unless he paints it for himself. It, it, it gives him a, a unique, you know, a unique shine to him. Interesting. So, let me ask you this. If you were to treat them separately, you know, the one on the left just as basic attire and one on the right, what would your individual rankings for them be? So, okay, if we were just looking on the left, I would just give him a C. Just straight up, just cause it's it's like it, it looks nice. He looks nice, but it's just simple. It's just a black jacket with the, with the the trunks, uh, nothing, nothing to to stare at. I mean, you know, just another fight. He just, he looks, just like a, he doesn't look like a, a fighter. He just looks like a like a you know someone who models, you know, for like uh like men's clothing. But on the right, you know that that's menacing. That that looks like someone's about to kill you. Uh, do do you want to see more designs that he's done? Yes, 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 yes. All right. So, as you'll see here, um, apart with the entrance, also he'll come out with uh, just his headgear. Sometimes the cape, you know. But so obviously he does various colors, various designs from it all. He usually goes with the one uh, that you see, just the one on his chest, you know. Um, He'll change, like I said, he'll change up the color. Sometimes he'll change up the design of how the uh, the tongue comes out. Maybe have some words written across on him. You know, this is another one where it's more like Venom, like how you were talking about, where it's just kind of the tongue with black. Oh, look at this one. This one, he put a like a. I almost want to say like, a, how would you describe it? Like a, like there's an eye, obviously, but uh, I'm trying to think of what's the the. The like monster I'm thinking of from the game was it uh am I thinking of the wait where what game is it from Dom do you remember the Dokako demon oh from Doom yeah yeah looks similar to that you know oh yeah wait is it me or is it the like the ring above looks like the Statue of Liberty like the crown that mm, you wear I noticed that too interesting but I. But I, I I, yeah, I, I sorry, I forgot if you uh, gave your rating yet. But so I know you said you would give the regular one a C. But what was your ranking for the demon? Oh, for an S. But I mean, not, not only that, but like if you think about it, the uh, since he paints his like is pretty much uh, all around of his eyes completely black. Technically, that also works to be a sort of um, a benefit in terms of like uh, I guess how would you say it? Um, uh, in, a, in a way of like blocking out light, because I'm pretty sure like uh, if you put like black around your eyes, then if uh, if light were to hit your 
directly, it wouldn't hurt as much, or it would be at least deflected a bit. Hmm. If you catch my drift, Interesting. isn't that why like like football players like put like black uh, lining like below their eyes so that uh, any lights above wouldn't like hurt them? Mm, true, kind of true. I didn't even think about it. That's real interesting. To hear so that it works for technical technicalities. Yeah, that that's interesting. Yeah, so that's Dom's raging. Uh, the next one, Dom. This one is again coming from a stardom wrestler, uh, Utami Hayashida. Hoping I pronounced that right. Um, so as you see, very similar to a. Uh, I guess you could say like Oscar, you know, they have the big old overcoat, very uh, red centric, even down to the hair. Um, in in stardom, they have factions, which are like uh, groups, essentially, that wrestlers are a part of. So the flag she's bearing is for uh, her faction, Queen's Quest. And uh, I don't know if they do it. I don't know if they still do it. But uh, if you look on the image on the right, she has like a like a tiger mask. And uh, most, I, I, I don't, like, again, I, like I said, I don't think they do it anymore. But there was, like, a period of time where every single uh, uh, person in the faction of Queen's Quest had their uh, their own, like, uh, d- uh, their own unique tiger mask with, uh, I guess you could say, in a way, their own, like, color scheme. Because they all kind of follow a color scheme. Right. Like, hers is obviously the red, and then there's another one. Uh, her name is Azumi, who uh, is more, like, purple-centric. And then there's uh, another one, Saya, who's, like, green in a sense. There's another one that's blue, you know, stuff like that. So, like, their gears are very color oriented and they used to come out with their own unique masks and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts and ranking? Mm, I like it. It's flashy. The It's all red. I could I just see all I see a bits of gold and then black and white. I like the flag that she's holding right next to her. The mask definitely looks interesting. I would definitely like to see her with the mask. That would be. Uh, I mean, I guess that would look nice. But um, for ranking, hmm, I think I'm gonna give it a B because it kind of looks somewhat basic. Like uh, how would you say it? Uh, it's just a bunch of red. I like the gold. I like the uh, the K. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it here. the The mask looks nice. I like that. Right, let me see if hmm. I can find the image I was telling you about. Uh, continue speaking while I search this up. Yeah, uh, I was originally thinking the the mask was gonna be like like an, an entire like helmet type of mask, not just like a face mask. But it's interesting. I like it. It, it looks menacing. The whole lot of red, but uh, it's um. How would you say it? But it looks simple, in my opinion. It looks simple. I like the coat. I like the dress. Uh, but it, it just looks simple, in my opinion. I will give this a B. Right. Just, just because it just uh, it, it's flashy, but I mean it's not it's not that flashy, in my opinion. And so you can see here, this is what I was talking about. They kind of all, you see, own like they all each have essentially their own color. They all have their own mass. You know, and uh, yes. the one thing I'll, I'll tell you about that, uh, if you allow me to just quickly like rant a bit, the one thing I enjoy the most about Stardom uh, as a promotion, as long as as, uh, as a promotion, uh, uh, along with the wrestlers, is uh, they are very uh, how would you say? They put a ton of detail and attention into the way their wrestlers are presented. Because um, if you were to watch, you know, like all these other promotions obviously put in their own efforts, you know, but like there will be a lot of times where you see a wrestler come out and like their theme is, you know, kind of generic or their gear is kind of generic, you know. Right. And even sometimes the way they're presented, like during their entrances, like the entrances they make and all that, it's kind of like generic in a sense. It doesn't really, I guess you say in a way, hype them up, you know. Uh-huh. But, like, all the wrestlers in stardom kind of, uh, in their own unique ways, uh, boost their presentations, if that makes sense. You know, like, they'll come out with these really 
intricate and eye-catching gears, colorful gears, you know, stuff that uh really presents them as like, you know, uh how would you say it? Like uh contenders and champions, you know, like when they're champions, you know, they come out, they get uh all this uh how would you how would you call it? Like uh you know, like effects, like stuff, like uh, yeah. like you saw with yeah. Okada, the money raining down, you know. Similar in stardom, they'll have like sometimes streamers go around when they make their entrances, especially the champions. Sometimes they'll have special effects. They put a lot of effort into the way they're presented. And it, uh, how would you say, uh, it translates well because people, you know, they're like, you know, kind of what I, the big old question I've been asking with a lot of these is that, uh, you know, People see them and they're already intrigued, you know, like they haven't even watched them wrestle, but they've seen their entrance, they've seen the way they're presented in such a unique way and they're already like, in a sense, hooked, like they want to know more, they they get uh, curious from it all, you know. Yeah. And speaking of that, we're on to our final wrestler, and our final wrestler is one of the kings of presentation, the king of of uh, getting you intrigued just from seeing how he looks. And uh, he translated it so well to his other faction members as well. The next person is Malachi Black, but also focusing on the House of Black, which is a faction out in AEW, Dom. Right, right. So the top left is Malachi Black. The, The other two images are his faction of the House of Black. What are your, uh, thoughts and opinions and rankings this looks very menacing it's like uh oh gee it's like wearing wearing oh my god the top left he's like he's like wearing a skull above with like thorns or like branches just coming out of his head that definitely looks spooky the the top right with the the two buddies he has with the with skulls and him wearing the the mask and, and with the with the branches coming out with the horns i'm assuming those are horns this looks menacing the bottom right, uh, it looks pretty basic, but I'm assuming this is just for, for for when it's you know time to fight. Well, this is following a fight, which is why you see all the paint kind of smeared from them. Okay, okay yeah, I, I see it now. And so, uh, this, uh-uh. I'm sorry, continue, continue. No, I was going to say that uh, it looks menacing. Like, if we were to see this guy, you know, one-on-one fight with the mask on, or with his buddies also with the mask on, and, you know, with that gray paint just slathered over, you know you're going to be destroyed. Yeah, I like it. So it's when you brought up the mask. So he wears the mask for the entrance, right? Yeah. But when he's not, when he wrestles, he doesn't wear the mask. But he has a certain look, and I'll give you explanation to the look as I show you. So when he comes out, uh, as you can see from these images, he usually has this paint on one side of his face. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. like black paint. Maybe some intricate designs on the right of it, you know? Right, right. And so the context behind this paint, and if you want to say, I guess, the lore behind it, is uh, in the WWE, because that's where he was uh, for a couple years um, in the late 2010s and early 2020 before he was one of the people that got released in those mass releases. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, he had a he had a segment where uh, one of the wrestlers, because it was a part of this feud, this whole thing about like an eye for an eye. They right. uh, they put his face like on the steel steps, and they made it seem like uh, they tried to gouge his right eye out on the steel steps. Oh, and right, then after right. that, he kind of disappeared from TV for a while. Like, he wasn't on TV for months, and then he returned, and. Uh, uh, the image was just up here. He came out like this, as you can see, with like the the right eye being covered, obviously. And it looked like he was going to start a feud with someone. And then like a week after he returned, he got released. But so he right. decided to play into that by making it a part of his new gimmick, kind of carrying on the story rather than just abandoning it. He carried uh-huh. it on into his own story of... Uh, you know, losing the eye. And uh, he had these segments where he's like in a mental hospital and they're trying to like convince him that it never happened, that it's all in his head, you know? 
And so when he showed up first on AEW, uh, here's the image. You can see you can see some remnants of black, but it's not like what he's like now. And ever since his debut, the black has slowly grown and spread to the point where you see like during some of his uh his matches and and uh entrance entrances it's like covering half his face kind of showing that it's like this like it, it almost in a sense like a disease it slowly started growing and spreading its way across i guess in a sense corrupting him so he he turned um he turned a negative, which was getting released and never getting to finishing up that story, into a positive by carrying it over to the next company he went to and went as far as to continue it through his presentation, through his storylines that he's been telling. Where now he even uses like a black mist and, you know, certain people he's used it on, it's caused them to become corrupt in a way. The girl you see in the bottom image that I have here for the presentation he sprayed her with the black mist and she slowly got corrupted and then finally joined their group after being, in a sense, fully corrupted by the black mist. Right. So he's very detailed with his presentation. He's very, uh, how would you say, uh, I, well, I, again, I, I think the only word I can use is he's very detailed as I just explained to you the whole lore behind just his entrance and presentation alone. Yeah. And so, real quickly, Dom, um, I'm going to press pause real quick here because I want to show Dom an entrance that he made for one of his uh, big matches in AEW. It's only him because uh, um, when they make an entrance as a group, they kind of, as you can see in the top right, they kind of just walk out with each other. There's nothing really, uh, uh, how would you say, like intricate about it. But his entrances alone are always pretty intricate. So, I'm going to press pause real quick here, Dom. All right, so we're back. Just finished showing Dom his entrance that he made at AEW Grand Slam last year in September. Dom, what are your first thoughts after watching the entrance? Okay, okay, th th that was pretty insane. Okay, okay, okay. The, the music, the feeling, the visuals, the lighting, ooh, and especially the, the, the red lighting at the end. That, that was pretty intense. It, it, it may it would make it makes you like just go into fear, just not knowing. Like like if, let's say we're about to fight this guy and he just has this sort of entrance, like you, you are just you know you're out of luck. It, it's, it's GGS at this point. But I liked it. It was it felt just so much terror with the mask, the lighting, the red lighting, especially the music. is just oof. It hurts in a good way, of course. But but um. This in and of its own, I think, deserves it. either an A or an S. But I want to give it an S because the backstory, the masks, the I thing, I, I like it. I give it an S. All right. Uh, real quick, Dom, do you want to see what his entrance was like in WWE? Because it also was pretty cool as well. Yes. All right. So we're going to pause here real quick, too, so we can get Dom's thoughts on this, too. All right, so I also showed Dom one from uh, when he was down in NXT where they gave him, you know, because it was one of their big, I guess you could say, like, pay-per-view events, Dom. So they gave him a live entrance as well with the band that performs his theme in WWE. But similar suit as well. You see a very dark and ominous presentation throughout his career or throughout his time, you know. Yeah. But so you obviously said you'd give it an S. And, uh. You know, basically just him and his group as a whole. So, those are Dom's rankings. And so, the final question I kind of want to ask Dom is, uh, out of the 10 wrestlers that I showed you in the, the tires you ranked, out of the 10, which three from, like, in order, like, uh, your top three from three to one would be, uh, which, which one of them would, uh, intrigue you the most you know like how i the the scenario like let's go to the scenario i gave you at the beginning in uh, episode one where let's say you know if you and i were roommates you saw me watching on the tv uh what three wrestlers your top three would if you were to see their entrance see them in their attires as you walked by would intrigue you enough to 
sit down and watch a match of theirs. Hmm. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I think for number three, I would give it to. Oh boy, man, this is insane. I mean, I will probably just give it to to all my three S's that I have at the moment. But 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 but, but uh, I would probably give. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not, I'm not sure because uh, these fighters look good. I like these fighters, but. It's just not. Uh, hmm. Well, let, let's let's make it easy. Right. Which one out of the ten, like if you had to pick one, would be the one that intrigues you the most that you want to see more from them? Right, right, right. Uh, hmm. yeah. Definitely, definitely the last one we just saw. Oh, so Malachi Black. Like, 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 but like the intro, like the intro with, the, with like the rock music, it's just, with the, like the metal music, it's just, and the, the backstory and all that stuff, I like that. Definitely that one. The second one would probably be, uh, with the, the I forgot their names now, I don't think about it. Uh, the guy with, with the, the tattoos, with the, with the, uh, the black paint all over. And oh. third would definitely be, um, I want to say the Homelander guy. Oh, okay. Or, so. the, or the the first one, uh, the, the the top ten spot that we reviewed. All right. So, um, the 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 demon Finn Balor would be one yeah. of them. Malachi Black, the one that I the last one. Um, Homelander was Cody, or uh, the first one was Okada. So, those are yeah. Dom's choices. And then, real quickly, Dom, just to kind of you know get the most out of this episode, you as a non wrestling fan, what do you think? Uh, or in a sense, would you say that uh, the presentation of these people matters the most, even if it's just the little things as what they wear when they make their entrance? I would say, I mean, because uh, the presentation, like the introduction, because first impressions always matter, right? If if you if someone takes the time to put in, you know, thought into their the uh, their their, their uh, I guess, their suit, their shirts, their jackets, their trunks, their, their, their everything. I feel like it does uh, matter to some degree. Uh, to some, maybe not matter because at the end of the day, they're just going to take it all off and they're just going to be, you know, you know, in just their trunks just to fight. Um, but, but personally, I feel like to some degree, the, the way that they dress, the way they present themselves, they have to cause fear. You know, it has to be about intimidation. It has to be about getting into the opponent's head to make them scared. So, yes, I feel like to some degree, the presentation, the way they look, the way they, they show themselves to the crowd, it has to be important, somewhat important. It has to be important for, for themselves, but also for the audience and the crowd. So the two things that you especially are emphasizing is that uh, their presentation at times can make them believable, you know? Yes, yes. As a fighter, as a competitor, especially if they're challenging for, like, the world titles, the top titles, you know, they have to have a look that makes them believable, whether that's in a, like, through their gimmick or just, you know, if they're naturally, like, look intimidating, as you're saying. And also the second part, uh, I'm blanking on the word, but... uh. How would you say it? Like, it has to. It's it, it's part of believability, but it's in the sense of, uh, you know, because you probably as an outsider, you know, you follow the view of that, you know, that most people do. It's like, oh, wrestling's fake, right? Right. But much like a movie that you know is fake, if it has a good enough plot, story, whatever, it. Uh, oh my gosh, what's the word I'm thinking of? It. Uh, it's immersive. There we go. There we go. So you you think that the attires themselves also have to be immersive in the fact that uh, yeah, you know what you're watching, like you said, because at the end of the day, a lot of times the entrance gear, you know, it's just for the entrance and not what they wrestle in, but it's enough to immerse you to the point where it's like, yeah, it's like a movie, you know, yeah, you know, like what you're watching isn't real and stuff, but uh, you're still gonna 
be intrigued by it just based off of what you saw, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, that that kind of just goes to show, you know, whether it be the wrestlers or the companies themselves that uh like you said, first first uh first impressions are always uh the most important because that can be a way that you uh grab someone's uh curiosity. Yeah. But so with that being said, Thank you all for joining us for another episode of the Rule 34 Podcast Season 2. I've been your host, Jack, joined by my fellow co-host, Dominic Steele. We want to thank you all for joining us for another episode. And as always, if it exists, we have an opinion on it. Thank you, and we'll catch you all in the next episode.